I have yet another neutral-ish type eyeshadow palette to share with you guys today, and this one's from Lancome. It's called the Audacity in Paris. 16 shadows, infinite looks, effortless style. And this is what the box looks like right here. And Elisa Eldridge is now the creative director behind Lancome. And I feel like ever since she kind of got in there, Lancome's kind of spiced it up. Their packaging's been a little bit funner. The designs and bigger palettes and stuff like that. And I'm a Lisa Eldridge fan as well. So <laughs> I went ahead and I purchased this palette here. I think it's relatively expensive, to be honest. I think it was 68 or 72 I'll list it right here because <laughs> I can't remember and I actually bought mine at Macy's online and they were having a gift with purchase and like I got like a ton of freebies when I ordered this. So this is what the cover of the palette looks like. It's got a nice little design on there. I think it's super cute. The Eiffel Tower and the heels. It's it's cute. I dig it. <laughs> um, and then the size wise, this is one of the Lancome Quince, one of these style packaging. For size reference, this is how big the palette is. It's a pretty good size. Granted, there's 16 eyeshadows in there as opposed to five, but um, it's a fairly large um, palette. So this is what the inside of the palette looks like. It's got that same motif sticker over the mirror, which I'll probably just leave there because I tend not to use the mirrors anyways, but it is a fairly large mirror. So if you do like to use mirrors, it's, it's a good size one. And then this does come with a double-ended brush. Um, one side's fluffy, like like so it's it's all right it's not the softest thing in the world but it's not the stiffest either and then the other side is like a paddle type of it almost reminds me of like a flat concealer brush instead of like a shadow brush but um there's synthetic bristles and then it says lancome on there i did do a demo with these eyeshadows which is what's on my eyes right now which will be towards the end of the video if you're interested in that um i tried to kind of mix it up um with a couple shimmers on the lid and then mostly the satin type matte shades are from the crease upwards and i didn't have any trouble blending and i feel like the look came out really nice and it's pretty however some of the shades are not the most rich intensely pigmented shades in this particular palette i found like when i used this shade right here for a kind of a transition um it was just really easy to build it and blend it up and it, it wasn't like overdone or anything like that which made it kind of easy some shadows um you know you take the tiniest amount and you put it on and it just it doesn't blend and it's too dark at that that moment like uh, Lorac Pro <laughs> and Mattes do that for me but I found when I used like this shade it was it was really nice however it isn't the most richly intense pigmented eyeshadow and I found that a couple of these shades weren't they're not the the richest of eyeshadows however they they built and they blended for me also this particular formula it does not feel like the formula that's in the quads or the quince rather this formula here is much it's silkier it is very richly uh pigmented for the most part some of the lighter shades can be a little on the faint side but for the most part the quince are are they have like a really soft texture which depending on can be good or bad um i'm kind of hit or miss with some of the quince um this feels to be a different formula it almost feels more like a, tr a real traditional um powder eyeshadow formula and the first thing that comes to mind when like I, both I use this today and when I look at it like this and since some of the shades are so they're kind of muted and more subdued I think bridal palette you can get some really soft looks out of here and there is some purples and pinks but it's not like when you use them you're gonna be like oh my gosh that is some purple eyeshadow or that's some pink eyeshadow you know um, so depending on your preference you may really like this or you may not I kind of feel like if you're a little afraid of color or really intense eyeshadows you might like something like this however I feel like since these shadows are kind of like that that you can kind of get something cheaper at the drugstore the shimmers for me did apply a little bit um, more rich and intense than like the satin matte type shades that I did use I used um, one two three four five I used five shades out of the palette for the look that's on my eyes and it did perform rather well and look turned out really nice and stuff like that but um it's if you're looking for that rich intense intensity like the uh, Kat Von D metal shadows or something like that this isn't it <laughs> another thing that I noticed is when I put my brush in the shades I did get quite a bit of like kick up from mostly more so the satin shades than the shimmer shades um so it kind of got messy inside the palette however when I tapped my brush off to use the shadows on my lids I had like minimal very very minimal fallout which was really nice I was surprised that there wasn't 
a little bit more. It was just like a fleck or so over here of this darker shade, but um, I was really impressed with that. Also, I don't feel like there's anything really, really unique in color in here. Um, if you have a ton of neutral palettes um, or palettes in general, I think you're going to run across quite a few dupes. I just don't see anything very unique in this palette. However, um, I am quite excited because it was it, it was easy to use. It was a, it's a soft, wearable look, at least for me, on the eyes, and I feel like I can just it's I feel like it's a palette I can grab for and not worry about you know having a blob of pigment on my eye. Something I can just work with really quickly is kind of how I feel about it. Again, this is just a first impressions, and this is the first time I used it. So hopefully, you can see a little bit better on the swatches, which I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and do right now. So here is the palette up close right here. Totally digging the little motif on the top. Again, it's like a hard type of a plastic packaging. And then inside, you've got the mirror right there. That's a sticker over the top. And then you have got your shadows right here. Now, the shades that I feel like um, are matte are kind of like this one here. I thought this was a matte until I got it on. It kind of was more like a satin. So I would almost say that everything in here has more of a a satin matte is I guess what I'd call it. This brown was pretty matte, um, but these other shades which I thought were matte are more like satin. Hopefully you can tell a little bit better in the swatches. I also feel that there's a good array of, um, you've got a, a warmer highlight and a cooler highlight. Um, you've got some warmer and cooler transition shades in here. You've got a, a little pop of uh, pur uh, purple, and then you've got some browns and your basic black and a slightly blue black down here. I think that the variety of colors in here is really nice as far as transition, highlight, crease, um, stuff like that. It's a good array of colors. And then each shadow is 0 0.045 ounces a piece, which is almost 0 0.05, which a full-size Urban Decay shadow is 0 0.05 ounces, if that guy gives you any idea of the size of each one of these shadows. So that you're getting quite a bit of product as well inside of here. So here's the back of the palette right here. You can see all of the shades that are in here. I know some of them are permanent shades. Those are the, the three darker shades. Right there. And then these next three. I'm surprised I didn't reach for that purple <laughs> when the when I did that the look. There are those. So you can see they're not, you know, they're not in your face colors, they're like muted. And these guys. Focus there, sweetheart. So you can see the... I did use this shade right here for a transition and while it's quite muted, it blended out that darker crease color really nice. This is really pretty too. Then these last three in the top row right here. And I when I use this color right here underneath the brow, it's not that pigmented when I used it. Um, it was it was more faint and it's kind of a satin matte color. So those are you know, but it's nice to have you got your shimmery highlight shade, um, and then you got a cool one and a warm one. And then these last four on the bottom. Right there. Keep in mind my skin is dry, um, no primer. Based on my first use of it, I do like the way the look came out. I think it's quite nice. I've had this on um, for about uh, four hours or so. I don't have creasing. I do have the drier lid type, so creasing is a little bit less for me than somebody with oily eyelids. Um, however, if you, again, if you have a ton of neutral palettes, I don't think this is a must-have. If you're looking for softer neutrals with a good variety of highlights, transitions, um, and deeper shades in the neutral range. I think it's I think it's quite nice. However, it's pretty pricey. Not a bad palette on my first use though. Um, I'm kind of excited to use it. It might be one of those ones that's really easy to grab. Some of the shades actually remind me um, a little bit of the Urban Decay palette, the Naked palettes. However, I think the matte satins in here are nicer than the Urban Decay 
palettes, but um, again, nothing super unique or anything like that. So. so if you're interested in seeing how all these eyeshadows performed upon first use in the look that's on my eyes, you can hang tight and we will get into it right now. I went ahead and primed my lids from the lash line to up underneath the brow with the NYX eyeshadow base. I actually mixed the shades 01 and 02. One's white and one is a dark flesh color because one's too light and one's too dark <laughs> for what I'm going for. Then on a Goss number 18 brush, I'm going to go into this shade right here, which is a shiny one, and I'm going to put that on the center of the lid. On the side of that Goss 18, I'm going to go into this color right here, and I'm going to put that in the inner corner and blend it into that other color. Then on a GSN 9 brush, I'm going to go into this brown shade over here, which appears to be a matte color, and I'm going to put that on the outer portion of the lid, and I'm going to bring it upwards and kind of through the crease. I've got a tiny bit of fallout here. Not, uh, nothing major though. Then on a Chikahoto GSN 7, I'm gonna go into this shade right here, which is also a matte. It's kind of a, a peach color. It's the second one in. And I'm gonna put this underneath the brow. It's almost like, now that it's on, I could, it's almost like a satin color. On a Hakuhoto J146, I'm going to go into the fifth shade in, which also is kind of a satin color. It's um, It has a little bit of a warm tone to it, or like rosy tone, I guess I should say. And there's a m bunch of product being kicked up in that guy. I'm going to say this is probably a satin as well, but I'm going to start blending out that crease with that color. And these are blending, these are blending pretty nice. The colors, some of them are like really subdued. Like that color there is kind of subdued. I wasn't sure how, you know, how much I'd have to build it up, but it, it looks pretty. So there's the eyeshadow done. I'm going to go ahead and finish up my eye makeup and I'll be right back to put on some lips for you guys. For lips, I chose the Marc Jacobs Pout Liner in the shade Nudist. I'm going to go ahead and line them and I'm going to slightly fade it inwards. And then for lipstick, I chose Charlotte Tilbury's Nude Kate. So there is the overall finished look using the new Lancome Audacity in Paris palette. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Um, thank you for watching. Do not forget to wear sunscreen and I'll see you guys later. Bye.